This news program is proudly brought to you by Paradise Foods, celebrating 90 years in PNG. AIDS Council urges citizens to get tested for HIV. Member Tio Pelgen allocate funding to source medicine from India. And Papua LNG project launch a disaster relief mission. A very good evening. This is Sunday's news. I'm Godwin Eki. Thank you for joining us. With the alarming number of HIV and AIDS cases in the country, the National Department of Health and National AIDS Council are urging citizens nationwide to get tested for HIV to know their status. Dr. Petronia Kaima said knowing HIV status gives people powerful information to help them take steps to keep themselves and their partners healthy. As a strong advocate in eliminating HIV, she highlighted that in PNG, HIV testing is provided free by the government. It is provided free by the government. You don't need to pay anything. Other countries, they are paying for the treatment. Other developing countries, partners, uh, donor partners are paying. Whereas Papua New Guinea, our government is paying. Hence, Dr. Kaima called on citizens to make use of this opportunity by getting tested so to know their status. By doing so, citizens are also saving the country from adding on to the statistics of HIV. Having worked with the HIV program with my colleagues sitting here for the last 20 years, we have saved a lot of lives through treatment. Okay. Almost 43,000 people have affected okay, deaths, reduced deaths because of the treatment. They are living a normal life. Gladys Kila, National MTV News. With the medicine shortage issue currently faced in health facilities around the country, Nawab District in Morobe Province has allocated funding to source medicine from overseas to help the people in the district. Nawab MP Tio Pelgen has allocated funding to source medicine from India to help supply the rural health centers and aid posts in the district. Some medicines have arrived and have been delivered to health centers in the district, while some are on the way, which includes paracetamol, amoxicillin, chloroquine and other medications as well. This initiative was done ahead by MP Pelgen in August through Nawai DDA by allocating funding for the medications to be procured. He thanked the University of Papua New Guinea Nawai students for their initiative in the provision of health equipment for the health centers and head posts in the district. He says this medication they are bringing in will complement the UPNG Nawai students' awareness drive. Both UOG and UPNG students will partner with other Nawai tertiary students attending universities to carry out effective awareness to the allergies of Nawai. The two weeks long awareness aims to address social, health, lawlessness and education issues in all allergies of the district. The district administration and NDDA are fully backing this initiative. Tamara Agavi, National MTV News. The Consultative Implementation and Monitoring Council's Education and Training Sectorial Committee had their inaugural meeting for 2023. The meeting looks to update on the government's plans and initiatives in the education sector in the country. The Consultative Implementation and Monitoring Council's Education and Training Sectoral Committee was established by the CMIC Secretariat in 2012 to follow up on the CMIC's Annual Development Forum 2012 recommendations that were endorsed by the NEC. Over the years, the committee has been actively playing an important role in providing a policy dialogue platform to all concerned stakeholders, including state agencies, development partners, civil society organizations, private and individuals to discuss issues relating to the education and training sector. 
Addressing the committee recently, Victor Piniel, the Deputy Secretary with National Catholic Education, expressed his concern on the lack of literacy programs for children attending early childhood education programs. That's prep. You're talking about five-year-olds, six-year-olds. You've got to have a very strong reading program. That's all. You don't go to any other thing. You don't do science, social science. Those, those are temporary. Those will come later. You focus on reading. At a certain level, a child, a student should read at a certain level. That's how you develop literacy. You don't go and start teaching. I've seen some of our elementary schools. They don't do any reading at all. So we need to design a reading program for the department. The meeting also aims to highlight information and shared experience in the education sector in the country and also to do awareness on issues affecting budget, teachers and management of schools. The purpose of the committee is to do follow-up on and ensure that the recommendations made at the CIMC ADF 2012 were implemented by responsible agencies concerned with the education sector in PNG. Grace Papiali, National, MTV News. The recent flooding and king tides along the Purari River in Gulf Province has greatly affected local communities, destroying arable farming land, clean drinking water and land for shelter. In response to this natural disaster, on the 2nd of November, Papua LNG Project launched a disaster relief mission to assist villages in its area of influence with 30 tons of food rations and medicines. In coordination with the Gulf Provincial Authority, the project will also be providing relief efforts to communities outside its area of influence. In recognition of the need for the provincial and district governments to enhance their social service delivery to the waterway communities, the project will be allocating one dinghy each to the Baimuru Local Level Government Administration, the Ihu Local Level Government and the Kerama Disaster Office. These dinghies are donated for the purposes of supporting these offices in carrying out their respective functions to provide social services to the waterway communities. The mission began at Apiope village at the mouth of the Purari with project staff distributing food rations and medical supplies which were specifically handed over to a community health worker based at the health ed post or health center in the village or administered by the team doctor himself. Amanda Ilaitia, National MTV News. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us. You're watching National MTV News. A total of 300 students graduated from the Pacific Adventist University today in Port Moresby. Chief Secretary Ivan Pomaliu encouraged the graduating class of 2023 to be self-disciplined and ensure there is prosperity in any organization that they join. A total of 300 students from six separate disciplines across the four schools today graduated with flying colors at the Pacific Adventist University in Port Moresby. The graduates have been urged by the Chief Secretary Ivan Pomaliu to be self-disciplined and strive to work hard to deliver for the organization that they will join. These graduates were reminded that they have enrolled because they knew they have the potential and it was through this potential that they have met all the requirements to come thus far. The Chief Secretary urged them to utilize resources and work collaboratively and manage time time to deliver best outcomes for any organization that they will serve going forward. He further highlighted that the lack of humility has been the downfall in this generation of young people and urged the graduates to have humility wherever they go. Sharon Engnui, National MTV News. 
A business graduate from the Pacific Adventist University graduating class of 2023, Metusela Reim has urged students to manage time and prioritize education as it paves way for a better lifestyle. Reim made these statements at the PAU graduation ceremony that eventuated today in Port Moresby. A graduate from the Pacific Adventist University in Port Moresby, Matthew Zayla Ryan, is encouraging other students to never give up on God and their education itself, as education is the only key that will pave way for a successful life. The encouragement I can give is a, a very important encouragement is to never give up on God. For even when you feel down or in anything in life, you must, you must always thank God and uh, accept him. And uh, secondly, you must make sure that no matter what in life, you must always be educated. And it's very important to be educated in this world, in this society. For PNG, uh, in this PNG society, uh, it's very important to be educated. Mr. Ryan hails from the Highlands region, particularly from the north of Western Islands province. He was among the 300 other graduates of the 2023 graduating batch at the PAU graduation ceremony today, sharing delight towards his achievement. Mr. Ryan highlighted that he is the first in his family to attain a degree and acknowledged the maker and his dad for his achievement. I acknowledge God for his provision throughout my life, throughout my studies. Uh, he has be, con his contribution has been uh, played a very big role in my life. And uh, secondly, for my dad, uh, for never giving up in me, trusting in me, and uh, believing in me that I would one day graduate and uh, bring home a degree, a bamboo for him. And uh, lastly, to my mom and uh, my relatives, my friends, for my Grandfathers, who has always, grandfather, uh, Ryan, always encouraging me, motivating me spiritually and uh, uh, for pushing me forward and for always not giving up on me. He further highlighted that being a student, there has always been challenges, especially when it comes to time management and emphasize on how he overcome these challenges. Uh, prioritize your time. It's very important. Make sure that uh, assignments that are due for next week must be done today or this week and uh, never give up you must prioritize your time make sure that things that are important become your first priority and things that are not important become your last priority mr ryan graduated today with a degree in business majoring in accounting and entrepreneurship sharon engnui national mtv news the Kumul Training Institute providing TVET certificate and diploma courses witnessed its 47th graduation yesterday in Port Moresby. Director for Kumul Training Institute, Max Guri, highlighted that KTI is a school of second chance education. The 47th graduation of the Kumul Training Institute in Port Moresby saw Tibet students graduate with certificates in different courses provided by the institution. Talented. Present to witness the ceremony were parents, families and invited guests, including the director Max Guri and sponsors that were present on the day. Director of Kumul Training Institute Max Guri highlighted that Kumul Training Institute is a school of second chance education where Papua New Guineans are given an opportunity to study in the area of their field which they wish to pursue in life when it comes to job and one's vision. Kumul Training Institute that provides short and long-term courses to diploma courses always has industry experts that teach their students with real-life skill sets and to prepare them for the on-job placements. He said the institution acts more like a second chance education institution where it has given many Papua New Guineans hope of becoming what they want in life and have gone into earning their living upon graduating from the school and applying for jobs to make a living and to support their families. The school while providing for Papua New Guineans, most of the students are sponsored to study by their sponsors, particularly by district members who are supporting young youths from their electorate to study at Kumul Training Institute. 
Director for Komu Training Institute during the college's 47th graduation highlighted that students that graduate with certificates and diploma are employment ready. He said many students that graduated in the past went on to becoming successfully employed both in government and private organizations. While employment is a major contributing factor to petty crimes and social issues and disorder in communities, let alone the many law and order issues in the country, Director Fukumu Training Institute, Max Kuri, during the college's 47th graduation, highlighted that the students that graduate with certificates and diploma are employment ready. He said many students that graduated in the past went on to becoming successfully employed both in government and private organizations. He said the institution was set up to provide pathway and a second chance for grades 8, 10 and 12 dropouts as well as ordinary Papua New Guineans that needed to learn a skill or trade in order to then go out and find a job. Kumu Training Institute having employed industry experts in their own field and having to recently create a new board as part of the requirement by the national government of the Higher Education Board, Kumu Training Institute now has top qualified head in place to ensure that students are given the best possible skill set in order to find employment as soon as they finish their studies for both short and long term courses. Director Max Kuri said the school does provide support where possible. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us. True Kai Sports. Welcome to Trukai Sports. The 17th Pacific Games 2023 is set for its grand opening tonight at the Solomon Islands National Sports Stadium in Honiara. The moment where Pacific Island nations have been waiting for. The Games grand opening ceremony that will light up the night skies of Honiara's newly built National Sports Stadium. According to the official program, the event starts at 7 p.m. tonight with the first performance to be put on, Nature in Harmony, followed by the Athletes Parade. This will then be followed by the Blessing of the Games, the National Anthem of Solomon Island and Flag Racing. The Declaration of Games opening will be done by Solomon Island's Prime Minister, Manasse Sogavare, right after the final baton relay. The program is expected to conclude by 9 p.m. The Pacific Games brings the true spirit of sportsmanship, cultural diversity and a symbol of unity in the Pacific region. The 2023 Games brings about 5,000 athletes, officials and support staff from the 24 Pacific teams. Um, hi, I'm Carissa. I am from Team Tonga in the sport of swimming and just gotten into the Solomon Islands. Very hot, but it's been very lovely. It's um, definitely more organized um, than I expected and I love that there are so many people here. Right Meanwhile, as for Team PNG, athletes are set to take on the games in their respective codes in flying colors of red, black and gold. MTV Trukai Sports will keep you updated on the highlights of the 2023 Pacific Games. Grace Papiali, Trukai Sports. The Eastern Papua Cup 2023 tournament kicked off this weekend with 32 teams participating and will run for another three weekends leading up to the grand final. The University of Papua New Guinea soccer field was filled with excited people from Milbay province who reside in Port Mosby, with their stalls set up around the field in anticipation of the matches to be played today. According to the Eastern Papua Cup Tournament General Secretary George Bukoya, the aim of the tournament is to support all the Milbay people residing in Port Mosby to take home the deceased as it was an issue back then. They saw football as a conduit to rectify the issue and unify the people of Milbay province in Port Mosby. 
first week we anticipated we'll go for another three more weeks, huh? having the finals in the, in the final weekend. So we should end our tournament just after the third. Huh? He added they have 20 men teams and 12 women teams participating in this year's tournament. The teams are categorized into four pools. The game started off this weekend with the tournament officially opening next weekend. Amanda Ilaitia, Chukai Sports. Chukai Sports continues after the break. Stay with us. Chukai Sports. You're watching Trukai Sports. In a thrilling conclusion to the 2023 Telecom Limited Golf Tenants at the Royal Port Mosby Golf Club today, Team Telecom emerged victorious in the grand final. Over the past nine months, 10 corporate teams have showcased their golfing skill in this impressive tournament. Leading up to today's intense grand final, which Team Telecom received the winning trophy with 47.5 points, just two points ahead of runner-up, Team Skull with 45.5 as TST Dragon secured the third placing. Captain John Cholai of Team Telecom expressed gratitude towards the main sponsor and all corporate teams that participated. In a gracious acknowledgement, he highlighted the collective effort that made the tournament a success. So today is the culmination of uh, nine rounds of competition, uh, with, uh, which we sponsored by Telecom. And uh, we're, we're quite, quite happy, uh, very, very proud uh, to be sponsored by a national team, uh, a national company. and. Uh, all our players uh, have actually contributed uh, to the to the win, to the success. So during the uh, during the nine rounds nine rounds of the play, we, we choose which players are better suited depending on who is on the other side. So there's a little bit of a mis matching arrangement that goes on as well, and uh, that that uh, that makes sure that the the competition is uh, competitive. Say also big thanks to the to the sponsors of all the, all the other teams. You know all the. Uh, that sponsored the, uh, the team, so that's good. And I uh, make it very, very interesting. Despite the absence of Telecom, PNG CEO Amos Tepi, who is currently out of the country, his representative from the office conveyed appreciation on behalf of the CEO to everyone involved in making the grand final a memorable event. The Telecom team's victory marked the end of months of competitive golf, celebrating skills, sportsmanship and friendship among the corporate teams. Louis Maingu, Trukai Sport. The National Capital District Football Association soccer competition scores, as updated from yesterday's matches, for the boys and girls under 15s, under 17s, under 19s, under 23 and the A-Light games. The Saturday's matches had 22 matches on all of the categories, under 15s, under 17s, under 19s, under 23, and ally teams. The under 15s boys team, Southside FC and Palm South FC won their matches, whilst the girls team, Hackery Academy and Valley Strikers won. Under 17s boys team, Southside FC and Valley Strikers FC won, whilst the girls' team, Southside FC, won. Under 23's team, Southside Girifa vs. Hacker United and Collingwood FC vs. Palm South FC tied by one point each. The A-Light women teams, Hacker United FC and Allies FC, won their matches, whilst the A-Light men's team, Hacker United FC, won. One A-Light women match, Palm South FC vs. Valley Strikers FC, got cancelled with three teams got washed out. Grace Papiali, Trukai Sports. And that ends Trukai Sports, the Money Plus weather report is next. Stay with us. Trukai Sports. <laughs> Trukai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by MoniPlus, with you always. Weather forecast for the next 24 hours, Southern Region, Port Moresby, partly cloudy, Daru Kerema, partly cloudy as well, 
Alatau partly cloudy with possible brief showers, Popondeta cloudy periods with possible brief showers. In the Mumase region, lay cloudy periods with few showers, the Deng, Wiwek and Banimo mostly fine. In the New Guinea Islands region, Loringau rain showers and possible thunderstorm, then cloudy periods, KVN partly cloudy with few showers, Kokopo and Rabaul, Kimbe mostly fine, Buka partly cloudy with brief showers. And in the Highlands region, Mount Hagen partly cloudy with few showers, Goroka and Kundiawa cloudy periods with few showers, Mendi and Wabeg mostly cloudy with some rain showers. Waters of Southern PNG Indonesian border to Daru to Kiwai Islands to Kerema to Yul Island to Hood Point to Samurai Islands seas 1 to 1.5 meters. Waters of Samurai Island to Cape Vogel to Eastern and Western Milin Bay Islands seas 1 to 2 meters. Waters north of Cape Vogel to Yuen Gulf to Finchafen seas 0.5 to 1.3 meters. And waters of Finchafen through Vitis Dempier Straits to CSC and Long Islands seas 1.5 to 2.5 meters. Waters of Long Island to Medang to Wiwek to Vanimo and Northern PNG Indonesian border seas 1.5 to 2.5 meters. Waters of Manus and its western group of islands seas 1 to 2 meters. Waters of East and West New Britain to New Island and Bougainville seas 1 to 2 meters. And looking at the ocean forecast, Coral Sea seas moderate to rough, east to southwest winds of 15 to 30 knots. Solomon Sea seas light to moderate east to southeast winds of 10 to 20 knots. Bismarck Sea seas moderate to rather rough, southeast winds of 15 to 25 knots. Pacific Ocean seas light to moderate easterly winds of 10 to 20 knots. The weather update was proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. And that wraps up the news, sports and weather for Sunday the 19th of November 2023. From all of us here, pleasant view.